Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and today I thought I'd show you something I've been working on recently it's painting up these beautiful bunker sets for dust do you remember dust it's still around and it's been going for a long time it's a tabletop miniatures game set in a kind of weird war as in an alternative World War II uh, kind of universe and it's got sort of walkers and World War II tanks and things like that uh, it was originally created by Paolo Parente and his studio and in fact uh, it was first presented to Rackham as a game and they wanted a science fiction game in their stable next to their game Confrontation so they converted it into a game called AT43 which I've talked about on this channel before and really enjoy. Now when AT43 uh, folded um, the dust concept was finally released and it was originally released by Fantasy Flight Games and they had this beautiful big box edition back in the days when they used to make coffin sized boxes as these were called and this is the premium edition so it actually came painted and there was a lot of stuff in here it was really a lovely set uh, they supported it for quite a while and brought out a lot of stuff uh, including these bunkers and uh, they went on to make a smaller set which was this one again this was the premium version smaller set as you can see I spent a lot of money on dust over the years um, when Fantasy Flight let go of it it was taken up by Battlefront who are in fact a New Zealand company and make Flames of War and they released this version and Dust Tactics as it was originally called became Dust Tactics and uh, Dust Battlefront Oh, I forgot to mention as well, Fantasy Flight did a version called Dust Warfare. Oh, it's so confusing. Anyway, there were versions with uh, large grid map kind of things, and there were versions with just traditional tabletop kind of playing. Uh, so anyway, that's the last one I've played, which is the Battlefront version. But in fact, they no longer do it. There was a huge dispute. Something happened, and now uh, the Dust Studio, or Palo's Palo Parente Studio, release it themselves under the uh, label Dust1947 and I haven't played that version yet but I believe it's very close to the last one. Whew. Right, there's a little bit of history for you. Let's get on to this painting. Now I have a lot of dust miniatures, heaps and heaps and heaps and I enjoy the game even though I haven't played it for quite a long time. But I've had these three bunkers sitting around for quite a while. There's one each for the Allies, the Axis and the SSU who are sort of a Russian kind of uh, faction and they're all quite similar, but they look pretty spectacular. Let's look inside these bunkers Ooh, And don't they look nice look at this we've got this lovely sort of double gun here And we've got a number of crew members as well manning that gun now these actually didn't take me too long to paint um, basically, I just gave them a gray undercoat and then I gave it a heavy dry brushing of lighter shades of grey and then I used some weathering powder and some brown ink to give it this weathered look so there's brown ink or brown wash I should say Agrax Earthshade um, gives it this sort of grotty look and weathering powders for this and then I painted up these quite easily again just using base coats and a little bit of dry brushing and as you can see, they're very effective guns, aren't they nice? Look at that. Now we have uh, a bunch of guys manning this, this station, and I've given them a pretty rough paint job. The thing about my dust figures is that because some of them came pre-painted originally, um, they didn't have really detailed paint jobs, and I've really just kept them in that style because they're for playing, not a uh, fancy display or anything like that. So we have a bunch of guys there and they have this gun and you'll find also that each one of these bunker sets came with another gun. So this is the Axis one. We've got a single gun for the Axis as well. So if I want to I can take out this double gun and just put a single one in there. I can find the hole. There it is. And then you've got a single one. And if you want to, on the tabletop, you can close that up. And when it's used for the first time, you can go, ha ha! <laughs> or when the bunker is attacked, and you can see all the lovely insides. Now, over here, we've got the SSU one, which is our sort of Russian style. And this is uh, pretty much a sort of greeny kind of style. And they're using uh, Tesla guns, which are these lovely guns here, as you can see. 
And they've done some very clever things here, the uh, manufacturers, because really these are all very similar uh, bodies. The, gu the guns have the same bodies, but they just have different barrels to just make them a little, little bit different. So there's your double gun, and of course there's a single version of that one as, as well. And we have some different guys in here. As you can see, they've got the red star on the cap, and backpack and sacks and stuff that they're carrying around. And these are very simple paint jobs, really just painted and washed with a very quick little highlight. Didn't take any time at all to paint. There's another guy shouting orders. There's another one. Putting another order in. So that's that bunker. And then for the last one we've got the Allies and they have a light grey scheme. And uh, these barrels, of course we've got the single version there I can use. And if we take that out, we can... Let's take that one out. Oh, there we go. We can see this bunch of guys inside. Now all these bunkers come with little doors. These are actually removable, but I've rammed them in there quite hard. Very simple weathering effects there. You can see a little bit of the weathering powders, which always uh, are very easy to use. You just slap some weather weathering powder on to give, give it a bit of grottiness. And then some streaks of uh, brown wash there, just to look as though the oil is dripping from the top. So there you go, three bunkers, and hopefully I'll be using these in a game of dust tactics or dust tactics battlefield or dust 1947 or whatever it's called the next time it comes around and i think there should be some uh, lovely uh, central points uh, to fight over in a tabletop game and they came up really well and that really they only took me a couple of uh, afternoons to paint very easy to do especially when you're having these rough weathering effects there's a little bit of green ink in there as well just to give it a bit of um, effective uh, mold or um, growth. Well, as you can see, I have rather a large amount of unpainted dust stuff here. These, of course, don't include all the troops. These are just large tanks and walkers and helicopters and things like that. Now, when Fantasy Flight let go of this game, they put a, a lot of this stuff on special, so it was really reasonably priced when I bought it. Um, but getting around to painting it is another thing entirely. You can see some of these uh, pre-painted ones. They're probably some of the ones that came in the original premium sets. So those ones and these ones here, you can see they come up very well with quite simple paint jobs. So really it's just a question of getting out the airbrush really and doing these in batches. A little bit of camouflage on them and they'll come up really well. But there's some quite spectacular tanks. I mean look at the size of this thing. It's a fantastic tank. Absolutely huge. Must dominate the battlefield. This one here has got a whole lot of troops in it as well. I actually did a bit of magnetizing on this one. So these little guys have got tiny little magnets. You can see a little magnet down there and that keeps them in place without a base. So they can actually fit. You can see there's a magnet in there and there's one on his, on his uh, foot. And there we go. And that looks great. So that one painted up will look fantastic. Um, these guys have all got removable turrets. Uh, some nice walkers here, and a couple of planes as well. These tanks are really impressive because they're quite large, actually in a good scale. And we've got this huge German walker thing here with these unfeasibly large barrels and walking feet. And that's a pretty spectacular unit as well. And the Russians have these um, helicopters. So they're some wonderful toys. So when I get the time, I will get into these and finally paint them up. So if you're interested, uh, Dust 1947 is available, though I think the figures are only available direct from uh, the Dust Studio, which you can find online. And uh, unfortunately, because of the game has gone through so many rules iterations, it does seem to be floating a little bit in limbo, which is a bit of a shame because, as you can see, the figures are quite lovely. Here we have all the infantry figures I have for the game. And we've got the allies all down this strip here on the left. Most of these are painted. Some of them came pre-painted, other ones I've quickly painted myself. We've got the Axis over here. They also have some large guns here with multiple teams. And they have some zombies. And of course, apes. 
what army is is complete without some giant apes? And here are the Russians, which are very much mostly unpainted, sadly. Lots of work to do there. Wow, lots of figures there. Um, I've inspired myself. I've really got to play some um, games of Dust very soon. Well, there you have it, folks. A quick reminder about the game Dust. Dust Tactics, Dust Warfare, Dust Battlefield, Dust 1947. Whatever you want to call it, it's Weird War Tabletop Miniatures Gaming. And, of course, there are other systems available in this kind of genre out there. And, in fact, you could be using uh, figures from this game using those systems if you wanted to uh, rejig all the stats and stuff like that. But I still think this is a really good game and worth checking out if you can find the miniatures at a reasonable price. That's it. Thanks very much for watching, folks. The Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. I will see you next time. Bye for now.